Hi guys, thanks for joining me. This is the tutorial for our little Robin project and I will quickly run through the tools, equipment and materials before we hop straight in and start making our project. This is the template set and it's a two part set. There is also a kit of materials and the kit has everything in it that you need to make the project. The template is available separately, the kit is available separately and then there is a combo deal which is discounted if you want to buy both together. The colours that we will be using, you can see across the top here, they are sand, warm brown, bright red and cranberry. I will of course be using my pocket scale for weighing out those weights and measures. My needles, I've got my 40 spiral, my 38 spiral and I do believe that my 36 star will actually get used today. <laughs> it's rare that I use that one but uh, we're going to give that a go today. I've got some 6mm teddy bear eyes which you can see over here and I will probably be using my awl, my punch tool and my multi handle. I will of course have my flat mat with my felt topper and that is on my foam base. Do please give the video a thumbs up and a like and if you aren't already please do subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell icon and that will tell you when we upload new videos. So that's all the tools and equipment and materials that we're going to need so let's hop straight in and start making our little robin project. To begin I have weighed out uh, 2.5 grams of the sand colour and it is obviously going to depend on your vision of this project. 2 to 2.5 grams fills this template very nicely, uh, particularly if you're doing the, the hanging robin. And if you then wanted to add, you know, a bit more chunk to his belly or his cheeks or whatever, then you would need to allow to add in uh, additional wool for that. But 2 to 2.5 grams is going to get you a really nice base. And I'm just going to start out by just pulling my fibres and just making them a little bit neater. Got a couple of little lumps in there. So I'm just going to pull and separate those fibres a little bit so they go down into the template a little nicer. As with all of the templates, what we're going to do is start around the edge and then work to the middle. And for that, you're just going to pull off pieces. I'm going to start, there's no real weights and measures to this, but what we are looking for is a nice even spread. When I'm doing points and corners, what I like to do is just fold back the top bit of the fibre. And the reason I do that is if you look at the fibres here, they're all quite higgledy-piggledy. By folding them back, we get this sort of nice rolled neat edge. And then that rolled edge follows that sort of line there. So that goes up into there. And I'm using my very uh, light needle, my 40 spiral. Just tapping my surface. I'm not driving into the mat at all. Just lightly over. And you'll get a little bit of the fiber stuck to your mat but very light needle. Next grab a little bit more and what we're going to do now is just work all the way around the outside of the template and to do that you want to make sure you get a bit of overlap from what you've put down before and use small increments you can always add a bit more fluff. So what I'm going to do is overlap the edge of the template like that and overlap the previous fluff that I've put down. And then I'm just going to run my needle around the inside of the template, pull those fibres back in. And again, that very, very light stabbing motion, just till you feel the surface of your mat. And that's where we're stopping. Get another bit of fluff. And when you start laying the fibres down, as I mentioned before, you are going to get, you know, a little bit of fibre stuck to your mat. And that's okay, that will help sort of hold this down 
whilst you're laying down the rest of your fiber but you you don't want it stuck too much otherwise your foam mat will become part of your project <laughs> so there I'll just pop that down and just get myself back so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that slightly adhered to my surface I'm actually going to turn the mat overlay those fabric those fibers again and then just lightly get that down in the template and that's what I'm going to do all the way round making sure that my template doesn't move um, you know just check yourself each time you put some new fiber down this is quite a large open template so it may have uh, a little bit of a wandering tendency so there we go very very light we're not looking for refinement at this point we're just looking for those fibers to be inside the template a little bit more up around this edge A nice little bit of overlap to the previous and don't worry if you've got a thin bit in the middle at the moment we will backfill to the middle I've got a little bit of a thin spot on that edge so I'm just going to pull off a small pinch overlap and put that in that edge there and that's really all we're looking for at the moment is a nice even cover up into his beak and again now what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of that fluff and fold it back so I've got that neat edge and then put that up into the little point of his beak and allow that frizz to overlap like so up around the top and I've still got all of this left at the moment so I'm just going to put a bit more up in his head and we're almost done with our first sort of round round the robin <laughs> round the robin for those of you, um, if this is the first time that you've watched one of my videos, you will find that I'm very self-entertaining on these things. <laughs> and I make myself chuckle all the time, so I apologise in advance. <laughs> okay, so that's basically my first pass. I've still got all of this left. And what I've got left is about a gram. So at the moment, I've only laid down about 1.5 grams in that template what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to bring in my uh, my punch tool and this is great it's got five needles and I'm going to use a technique that I call bouncing off the mat if you've got a flat mat you will find that it is so easy to do because you feel the density of your mat which means that you, you're not driving um, there are surfaces, lots of different types of surfaces, and they all have their pros and cons. Um, I like the flat mat because it's a real dense mat, and when my needles hit that mat, it's a very shallow needle that you're using. And that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm just bouncing off the mat. I'm not driving. But what that's doing is that's knitting all of this overlap together and just lightly compacting in the template. And that's all I want to do at the moment. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of the fibers. And again, using that overlap, the outside of the template and then run round. I've come up to my 36 star now and I have found that when you're dealing with slightly more volume of wool, this is a really, really nice needle. Um, it's, it's quite aggressive, so it will felt really fast, particularly with our wool. But again, really, really 
light stabs and you'll just you'll feel it when you hit your flat mat it's that density and you just stop and it's that little sort of compacting technique we're just firming it up and working over it not too much because we've still got quite a bit of wool to get in this template but you can see how the 36 style really does um, you know do the work for you so I'm going to lay down a little bit more fibre and now all we're doing is just filling the template and getting all this extra fibre in there nice and even right across the template and by adding it in little small increments if you do have a slightly thinner area what you I think sometimes the uh, instinct is to grab all of the fiber put it in the middle of the template and try and bring it to the outside and that's um, it doesn't really work as well you'll get much better edges and much better sides um, if you put the edges in first and then backfill to the middle so I'm just very very lightly all over this template just touching that surface up into his little beak and then I'm going to add a little bit more check over it's a little bit thin in the middle there and when you're adding new fiber um, you know to an already existing base give yourself your frizzy edges because that will blend it out into the rest of the project for you makes it a lot more seamless and obviously I'm doing this quite quickly you'll probably take a little bit more time so just getting those fibers down need a little bit more up there strengthen that top part and the weights and measures you'll find over on the website as well there's a quick sort of reference guide for all of our templates uh, which is www.mumsmakery.co.uk then if you click on projects infos and downloads um, you'll find there is a link there that is weights and or that says weights and measures and that's a really quick guide for um, all of our templates if you're ever stuck but the weights and measures are a guide it's what we recommend is a base starting level for filling the template obviously your project then you take it wherever you want to go okay so I've got a little bit of, of fluff left over but I'm feeling that that's quite I've got a little bit of a dip there so I'm just going to pull off a little bit more and just add it in there and once you've got once you've got it even and you're happy with that again we've not refined we've just put the, the fibers down I'm going to use that bouncing technique again really really lightly I can't emphasize that enough just all over just to knit those fibers together So now what I'm going to do is take my template off and don't be tempted to grab and pull just tickle it off the mat and it looks an absolute mess but that's okay because all we wanted to do right now was just get those fibers holding together in some semblance of a shape back into the template again and I'm going to grab my 36 star once more run all the way around those edges first just getting it back in that template and then all over just to start compacting it down taking it out of the template and obviously tickling it off the mat we'll um, floof it up so 
So again, just all over, small stabs, circular motion, working over the whole of the project, just getting it back into that template. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to come back to my multi-punch. And again, that bouncing technique, a little more vigorous. And then I'm going to give my project a little wiggle. And the firmer this becomes, the less it will stick to the mat. And this is now just a sort of a rinse and repeat. Keep going over it. Obviously, the multi-punch won't get into um, the little beaky part. So, you know, a single needle is good for that. I'm going to bring in my multi-needle. And this one is great because it has three needles sort of in a straight line. But again, just working over it lightly with the needle. like so and what we will do now is just keep going over this if you're putting this on a wreath or um, a card where you you're only using one side of the robin then this is just another thing that I found with the with the flat mat is it's still a bit loosey at the moment, but this is the side that we've been working on with the needle. And you can see there are a lot of pit holes. This side is the side that's been facing the flat mat. And I do find that the side that faces the flat mat comes out really nicely. If you're doing a hanging robin where you're going to be using both sides, then uh, we will be sort of turning it over um, to you know refine both the sides. But if you're using this for a card, or a wreath or something where you just need to see one side of the robin then um, you know you don't need to worry about refining both sides okay I'm gonna bring my 36 star back in I don't think my 36 stars ever got so much use in one of my tutorials ever I usually use it for um, more for sort of core cool sculpting but just the first barb on that needle you can see it's right down there right at that tippy tip and um, I you know sometimes I think especially if you're new to felting you want to try and use you know the whole needle and sometimes that can be counterproductive because all you're doing is pushing fibers out the bottom of your project and into your mat So this is still a bit fun, uh, still a bit spongy even. I don't know what fungi means. I think it's because there's a mushroom sat next to me and I almost said fungi. <laughs> I think everybody knows I just kind of make up words. This is still a bit spongy at the moment. So it's all about refinement and really firming this up. And you can flip you know, flip between your needles and your handles and, you know, whatever you're using. You don't have to have a multi-punch. You can, you can do this with, um, with single needles. Um, you can hold, I know these are two completely different needles, but you can just hold two needles together and, you know, go over it. This is completely bizarre because I'm using my um, 36 star and my 40 spiral at the same time. <laughs> you may have your own favourite needle. You know, it's whatever works for you. Um, I like the spirals. They're really nice and light, particularly because most of the work that, that we do are on sort of very thin petals and things. So I'm just, I'm not too confident with the two needles. It's... <laughs> getting to the point where I was almost sort of um, 
using them like chopsticks there they were starting to split apart so I will just go back to my single needle and my multi handle so what I will probably do now is just speed up this footage a little bit and the idea is now all you do is you just go over zoom in a bit here tiny little stabs little increments that compacting technique circular motions just the first barb and you just keep going all over your project and you really will f feel it start to firm up um, and remember just give it a little wiggle periodically um, to make sure that you're not grabbing your mat so I'm going to speed up this part of the footage or possibly do it off camera I don't know but that's what we're going to do we're just going to keep going all over it until it's reasonably firm you want it about 80 percent of the way there because we are still going to be adding some fibers on um, to his belly <laughs> So I've gone over it. I mean, it's it's fairly firm, and you can see I've got this is the side that we've been working on, and this is the side that's been facing the flat mat. And what a difference! If you were doing double sided, then you know we would flip it over and just tap back really lightly uh, on this side and use the flat mat um, and sort of felt topper to help. You know make both sides really nice and smooth this one's going on a card so I don't have to worry about both sides so there's our little robin shape all finished to about it's still a little bit spongy but we're going to be adding in the red breast next so we're going to do that adding the little red breast onto uh, the robin can be a little tricky but I found a neat little way of doing it which means that all of your robins and your little red breasts on your robins will come out in the same place and to do that we're going to need the wing template what I've got here is the bright red and the cranberry color the first thing that I'm going to do is do a little bit of hand blending now I've got equal amounts of um, both colors and what I'm going to do let me move that out of the way to hand blend and this is only going to be rough because I want some sort of tones and highlights just in that sort of red area get your wool put it on top of each other grab either side and you pull them apart then you stack them and pull them apart and stack them and what we're doing is we are roughly mixing up the fibres. I usually spin it around 90 degrees, pull it a couple of ways and there. And you could probably see that we've got, we've still got some blocks of colour. We've got some of the light red and the dark red, but that little bit of rough hand blending is all that we're going to need. And as we pull pinches off, we're going to grab sort of pinches of both the light and dark together so to get your little robin first off obviously decide which way your robin's going to be facing if you're making a wreath you want all your robins that are going to be facing the same way um, obviously if you're doing this double sided which I will show you in a minute you're going to put the red breast on both sides pop him back into his template and as with all of my templates, or most of them, they have a wiring hole. And you're going to look at about where the wiring hole is. It's going to be about there. Then you're going to get your wing template. And you're going to put the end of that template effectively where that wiring hole would be. And you use this part of the template just to match the curvature 
of the bottom of your robin and as you can see what happens there is it gives you a really nice section of where to put the red breast in so I'll show you that once again there's there's about where my wiring hole is I'm going to use this part of the template here and I'm going to butt that up against the curvature of the bottom of the robin and by doing that you'll get this sort of red breast practically in the same place every time. The first thing that I will do once I've got that in the right place is just pull off a real small bit of this fibre, elongate it out a little bit. I'm going to hold this down, grab my lightest needle, start there and just draw myself in that line very light needle and that's all that I'm going to do with the template actually on. So first bulb of the needle and you can see that I've put that line in there really nicely. Then very small pinches, you know, stack your fibres nicely and all we're looking to do, we're not looking to add a lot of bulk here or at least for this version of the project you may want him to have um, you know some sort of more um, raised areas and stuff so you'll add more wool accordingly but all I'm going to do for this is just colour him in so I'm going to lay the wool down first barb on the needle and go in And all I'm looking to do is make sure that I haven't got any uh, sort of screaming gaps where you see uh, the sort of sand colour coming through. So I'm just going to scratch my fibres about using the tip of my needle. Just put those down. And again, from there, just tiny little pinches. And when you come to this edge here, what I'm going to do is add a little bit of fluff right on the edge, all the way round. Keep that inside the line. And I'm going to keep this fluffy at the moment. going to lift him up, go over it a couple of times just very lightly with that single barb on my lightest needle, got a tiny, tiny little bit of um, sand showing through there, there we go. Now if you are doing the, the single side then what I would do is sort of fold these back around underneath, pop him back in his template and then go round right on that edge and that will tuck those fibres round and underneath the project and you'll end up with a very nice neat edge. If you're doing him double sided, then get your fibres down on this side, turn him over and repeat the process um, with the in the opposite orientation. So here's my middle bit. You know, you can see where your fibres are now, so it makes it a little bit easier. And then you do exactly the same again, just filling that in and colouring in. He's going to be one-sided because I'm popping him on a card. Just neaten up those little bits. So I'm just going to pop him back in his template. And now I'm really going to start firming him up. So 
So I'm using my compression technique, so tiny little stabs, first barb on the needle, little circular motions. And now I'm really sort of just spending the time firming this up. So it is um, probably boring to watch. <laughs> So have a look, once you start firming it up, your fibres may move around a little bit. So just come back in with tiny little pinches. You may want a little bit of the sand showing through just to add, you know, even more um, sort of depth and detail. But see, mine's not quite to the end here either. A tiny little bit more. all over and like I said I'm keeping this I'm keeping this quite flat I'm just gonna pop that round underneath pop it back in its template get that edge back in and by using the wing template, it means that this shape here will be completely consistent across your robins. So I'm going to use my multi-handle. So now what I will do is really start to firm this up a little bit more, go all over it a few times. And what I will do now is we're going to come back with that wing template and get that ready to add to our little robin. I wanted to quickly just come back in with uh, a couple of other robins that we have because it shows a completely different sort of red breast on the robin shapes themselves and it's still using the wing template but as you can see we've used this half or this sort of part of the wing for this one and the rounded area is up here and then for this one it's been flipped and practically the whole of the wing template has been used and applied in that way so there are lots and lots of different ways that you can use um, the wing template to create various different looks. I mean this one's got little beads on it, these have got felted eyes um, but and, and you can see on the close-up camera but their red parts are just built up a little bit more so they're a little bit more pronounced, they're not quite as flat. So there's so so many different options that you can use for um, making your little robin shapes and making them more unique and individual. I also wanted to come back before we do the wings and cover something with you. If you can see down here, my edge, just on this little bit here, is a bit thin on the ground. And I think sometimes that's good. that I mean that happens to me so um, if you do get that where your edge just really seems like it's a bit a bit thin um, pop him back in his template and just firm up what you've got a little bit don't be tempted to just grab bits of wool and uh, put it down on top. There's a slightly better way which will give you a much nicer edge and So here's my really thin bit here I'm going to take a little bit of fluff And I'm just going to take a second just to stack my fiber. So I've got a really nice uh, a really nice little tuft of fiber and then Put half of the fiber on this side and wrap it around and put it underneath. A few tacking stabs just to hold it in place. Turn it over, a few tacking stabs on the other side 
as well. Then what you want to do is pop him back in his template and work that area like you did. Um, I'm going in with my 36 star um, just for speed. But just your first barb on the needle, work it both sides. I'm going to come in with that bouncing technique, flip him over, bounce, bounce, bounce. And when I folded it over, I left frizzy ends. And because I did that, everything will sort of blend out really nicely into the rest of the project. So you get that sort of seamless um, effect. You won't, you won't get any folds or lines. So there, back in his template. Just work over it. And this is the reverse side, so I don't really need to worry too much about this side. But now what I'm going to do is just bounce all over on the underside. And again, I'm not driving fibres out the bottom, but just all over, bring everything into line turn him back over and if you look now I've got a much sturdier stronger edge uh, than before so if you do find that some of your edges are going a bit thin um, then that's the technique for actually adding and strengthening a, a little section of an edge so just fold it around your project rather than trying to add it on top Okay, so we've covered that. Uh, now we're going to make our wings. Okay, so what I've weighed out is 0.5 grams of the warm brown, and that's for the wing. I mean, obviously, you can do your robin in whatever colour uh, you want. The if you're obviously if you're doing him double sided, then you'll need to make two wings. Um, but as I said before, he's only going to be going on a card so one-sided for me I'm going to start like I did with the uh, the robin body by just getting myself a little bit and folding back that end to get that rolled edge and then that rolled edge goes up into that tip light needle light stabs just starting to secure a couple of fibers to the mat just to hold it in place as we build this up like so. And then ready for the next pinch. And as you do this, just reset your template on that sort of first little bit of fluff that you've put down. Edges in first. And work around. I'm using my 40 spiral, so really light needle. That overhang on the outside of the template. Totally, right. There. And I will do this very, very quickly. I mean, you get the idea. It's exactly the same as um, the large... Uh, body shape template, we get those edges in, backfill the middle, nice even spread of fibres across the template and then we just refine it down as we did before. Very, very lightly, I'm going to get my my clattering tool, my multi punch, bouncing off the mat, just knitting those fibres together in that main area. So they've got a little more integrity and they'll hold together when we take them off that mat the first time. I'm going to go very lightly over with my multi handle as well. 
so you'll you'll get a feel for it you want the fibers to be holding their shape but you don't want them to be stuck to your mat um, that's why you'll hear me say so so often you know first barb of the needle and it really is um, when doing something so small and so thin it doesn't benefit you to use the whole length of the needle that first barb will really work for you and as I've said many times before as well the flat mat is such a great addition uh, and it's a great surface to work on because you really do feel the denseness of your mat so I've just lifted it I've tickled it off my mat and now I'm just going to go back like with um, the body and this is refinement refinement and refinement compacting technique get this really nice and firm right up there with uh, sort of the same kind of firmness as your body and I'm not going to sit and do this on camera um, but once you've done that then basically we'll come back and attach the wing to the body what we have now is one wing and one body and if after you have finished felting if you still have some really sort of wild little hairs then you can go round it with a very small pair of snippy scissors and just trim off your absolute outside frizzy bits these scissors are uh, they're amazing and um, they're from tonic studios uh, there are Tim Holtz and they um, are really nice quality um, you, the sort of the scissoring action you can feel the blades just lightly grinding against each other as you snip so re I you know if you're looking for a pair of snippy scissors I'd recommend these okay bird wing <laughs> and if you're doing both sides then you know you'll have your red breast on your side you'll have two wings what you want to do is place your first wing and light needle let me zoom in on the close-up camera and you're just going to catch the very very edge and drive through catch the edge and drive through and do this a little bit all the way around so it's you can probably hear so I am using the full length of the needle and you'll see that it's not coming out too well but you can see that you can start pushing the dark fibers through take a second once you've got that in place and just have a look and say yep yeah, I quite like that that's fine in which case then go in with your more thicker needle so I'm using my my 38 spiral and again you're just catching that edge now you can go all the way round uh, your wing if you want the whole thing attached. If you don't, um, here's one. And as you can see, what what I do is go around this bit, and then I like to just get my finger and tease it out a little bit and you can see it just gives you that little bit of extra puffiness on the wing and this bit isn't attached at all so you, know, you can give him some little uh, sort of extra dimension by doing that I do realize that I haven't covered the beak but I will sort that in just a minute um, where's my needle gone there it is not that one <laughs> this one so take your time and just go around and catch that edge and you will come through the other side 
and you can now see that you've got that circle and what I would do is use that to place your other wing on. If you're doing it double sided when you're attaching the second wing then let me just grab this one see there's one on this side and there's one on that side so when you do adding of the second wing you're going to do slightly more of an angle and you're just going to use that first barb because you don't want to push the fibers back out side number one so that's um that's what you want to do if you're do if you're doing two pop that one over there this one i've got so many robins <laughs> I have a plethora of robins at the moment. Actually, I don't know what the term is for a, a lot of robins. I know it's like a murder of crows and a um, it's a, a business of ferrets. But I, I don't actually know what the term is for. Uh, I'm going to have to look that up now. <laughs> so there, I've driven through. I've got my little wing attached and then I'm just going to pop my small finger in there and just you know puff that up a little bit and if you if you puff your finger in there and and it comes away don't panic just go back in and go back over that edge and just attach it a little more firmly i did i or i do believe that at the start of um the tutorial i missed off the dark brown color and it's the dark brown that we're going to use for his beak so I'll just grab myself a bit and I always forget something in the um, initial overview of tools and equipment. Usually it's my awe. I always forget my awe and I was being really preemptive today and I thought I'll include it just in case I don't use it. <laughs> and then I completely forget to use the dark brown. It's fine. It's fine. The kit has everything in it, I promise. <laughs> Okay, so it is, it's a pinch. It's less than a pinch. It's half a pinch. Um, it's always better to add more, but let me zoom in on here. What you're going to do is, I'm gonna give that fold back and pop that right up in the tip and just secure those fibers right at the very, very tip of his beak. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is just stab a line between here and here just across that bit there and that's going to be the line of where his beak meets his face so you want to kind of draw a line straight across that part there once you've done that all of these fibers will scooch up into the beak And where you've stabbed down that line, it should hold it in place. So nice light needle again. We are going through to the mat, but we're not driving into the mat. And then pop it out and have a little bit of a look. I've got a little bit of light on that side there. So what I will do now is just grab another teeny tiny pinch which I'm going to add just down that side. And again. And then because now I've got that all that frizzy bit, pop him back in his template and use the edge of the template just to neaten it all up. Again, first barb on the needle and firm it. And there we go, his little beak. Now I've got this hefty tuft here. And that's what the snippy scissors are for. <laughs> there we go. Just take off any, when doing such a tiny, tiny little bit, um, you are likely to have a few wild hairs. So I've attached a bit of the red, so I'm just going to snip that off as well. And just neaten the whole thing up. 
like so. That's his beak. His beak's on. I am going to have to firm that up a little bit more. It is, um, it's a little unruly. I'm going to go up a needle. Do that little compacting technique just in his beak. Nice and light. There we go. So there's his little beak and that's in the dark brown. Um, there. So we have our body is done, our beak's done, the red breast and the wing. Now we just need to pop on his little eye. And I've lost his eyes. There they are. Okay. These are six mil. Um, little teddy bear eyes and they come if you've got them yourself they, they can come with these um, little backs um, what I do is just decide where you want your eye and if you if you are doing multiple <laughs> see I've got an whole army of them <laughs> Let's get them all in. Look, I have a pile of robins. Maybe that's what the um, multiple term of robins is, a pile. <laughs> if you're doing a pile of them, <laughs> then what I would suggest is that you decide on the first one where you want the eyeball. And I want my eyeball there. So I'm just going to drive through with my awl and give myself that hole and then put this one on top of that one line him up and use the first hole to make the second hole obviously don't drive too far through but then just to get that initial mark and then make your hole if you're doing a double-sided robin, then um, I just closed the hole. <laughs> if you're doing a double-sided robin, then you're not going to be able to use the um, the backs. Uh, this would be fine for um, you know a wreath or something like that. Um, but the one way you can do it is push it through and attach the back. Now I'm not going to do that because he's going on a card so I can't have this stuck out the back. So the other thing that I forgot in the overview was a pair of pliers. My pliers. B and Q. <laughs> I, I find going and getting a pair of heavy duty pliers that are um, work pliers rather than hobby pliers. Uh, they generally make much lighter work of tasks. So what I'm going to do is chop my eyeball off. <laughs> Things you thought you'd never hear yourself say. <laughs> I'm going to chop my eyeball off uh, right down here and to do that I'm just going to put a piece of felt over the top and snip and that I have learned from many things going pinging off in many directions. <laughs> so once you've got the cap I mean, you could use a seed bead and stitch it on and, you know, that's that's all all good. Me, I love me the glue. <laughs> and anybody who knows me knows that right now I am dreading this because I, I don't... Me and glue just aren't friends. And me and glue apparently are to the point where we're so unfriendly that I can't even find my glue. <laughs> so, we're going to pretend that I have glue... <laughs> little dot of glue 
I use super glue gel because it does give you um, a few seconds of extra working time and then you just dot your eye on there and leave it alone. I would put some greaseproof paper under here. Um, in fact, there is a whole ritual of prep that I go through to glue anything that involves greaseproof paper, kitchen towel, hazmat suit. <laughs> because I tend to stick myself to everything. <laughs> but if you're going to glue on these eyeballs, then as I said, use your first robin almost as a template. Just pop your all through and make that hole in your second one and then use that sort of little mark to glue your eye in place and you will find that you will end up with you know each robin will look very very consistent with in terms of placement so that's what we would do for our little robins and that's what i'm going to go through and do for um, my pile of robins um, that i have the other thing that you will find in the kit is some ribbon and there's all kind, um, I don't remember what ribbon I've put in there now, but obviously if you're, if you're doing hanging robins, then there's enough ribbon in there for you to um, hang and obviously you can attach that. That's then personal preference. You can stitch the ribbon on, you could glue it on, you could use some cord and you know thread it through with a needle and tie a knot. You could have um, some fishing wire and you can put some beads up it and then have a loop at the top. There's so, so many little options for these robins that they're just absolutely amazing. So what I actually did after uh, I made the other robins is I went and grabbed the ribbons and if you have the round robin wreath kit you will find you've got two types of ribbon, ribbon in there the white or the cream and red stitched ribbon is for your it is for sort of hanging and there's if you've got the round robin kit there's enough of this in there to hang all 10 if you don't want to make the wreath and you just want to make all 10 robins and hang them uh, for decorations then there's enough of this ribbon to do all 10 and you use about 15 centimeters of ribbon per robin and then there's also this red ribbon and the red ribbon this is the one uh, that is designed to use with the wreath and you sort of attach this to the wreath for hanging but I'll come back to this one if you've got the robin quick kit then you'll find that there's just this color ribbon in it as that kits for making three hanging robins so I've I've actually done all of the other robins uh, with some hanging ribbon so what I'm going to do is show you on this guy who is currently ribbonless. So I've got my awl and I generally find that about the middle of the top of his head is about the right pitch because you have to consider um, he's sort of front heavy. So if you put the ribbon in the middle of him, he'll sort of tend to lop forward so I find that about the middle of the head at the top and you want to come down maybe about about 10 mil and give yourself a reasonable sort of size of a hole through there I'm going to measure myself off 15 centimeters of the ribbon and just cut that there. Now as I believe I mentioned before you could um, you could stitch this on and add a little um, bow either side 
or there are so many ways of doing this but this this is probably the quickest way of doing it get your little ribbon and you just want something that will poke it through which this obviously isn't going to do because I'm trying to record it and I'm going to make that hole just a little bit bigger make it a little bit easier for myself so there it's nothing like trying to do with little bits of ribbon it's not as bad as the fiasco that was me trying to tie a little bow in the um, merry mistletoe video <laughs> there got it through okay so the quickest and simplest way of doing this is once you've got your and just check on your hanging hold him up and just make sure he's not lopping about and all I would do now is tie a knot right on the end and just you know, scooch this knot right up to the top as far as it will go and then pull it really tight so you've got a good knot there I'm just going to trim off that little bit of excess and then bring the knot down so it's nestled in the back um, you could put a little bit of extra felt over there if you wanted um, it's entirely up to you you know there are lots of ways you could stitch the ribbon on if you wanted um, you know there's so so many ways to add little bits of ribbon so if you've got the round robin wreath kit uh, you'll have enough to hang all 10 robins that you make if you want of this ribbon but you'll also find this ribbon in for hanging your wreath if you've got the quick kit robin then you'll just find that you've got um, this red and white sort of stitched effect ribbon in there for your robin so that's how uh, a quick and simple way for attaching your uh, ribbon to your robins so we'll hop back in now and we'll start making or I'm going to start making up the wreath so what I have here are all the seven robins uh, that I've made or seven of the robins that I've made from the round robin kit and underneath is the wire wreath ring which also comes in the kit and I've just taken a second off of camera to arrange them because generally I faff for ages <laughs> getting the placement and stuff like that so what I've put down here is uh, I've got some greaseproof paper which I've tacked down with some low tack tape and underneath here I have a um, glass uh, chopping board I generally like when I'm using hot glue I like to work on a glass surface the procedure I guess is very simple um, you want to have I'm not going to move all of these now but you want to have your wreath ring with your has four sort of crossbars and you want to have your crossbars sort of up here and and up here because we're going to use those crossbars to attach the red ribbon so wreath ring you want your crossbars here and here and all I'm going to do now I'm not going to sit here and painstakingly glue everything on on camera but what I will do is take I'm going to have to move this. I've got one of the crossbars in the wrong place. So what I will do is I'll just take one of my robins. I'll put some glue, a little bit of glue on um, each of the wires of the wreath. And then I'll pop the robin back. And generally you want that sort of over the top underneath, over the top underneath. 
and you just work all the way around your wreath that way you could uh, if you wanted to um, stitch them on you could put ribbons on the back of the robin and tie them on if you're doing the wreath then there will be an abundance of the little red and white stitched ribbon so you could take little pieces perhaps attach them to the back of the robins and tie them on there's just so many ways that you can go for uh, attaching your robins but the general idea to remember is to keep the robins all sort of facing the same way around and also you don't want one that's like that you want to make sure that they kind of follow round the robin <laughs> which i now actually found out is the term for a whole group of robins <laughs> so there we go i learned something during this tutorial as well <laughs> so i'm gonna hot glue mine on and once i have done that then we'll just come back and add the little finishing details <laughs> So my robin, or all of my robins, are now uh, sort of stuck in place. And all I've done is just put a little bit of glue. I haven't glued it right the way round. Um, as you can see, as I was going around, I got that one caught underneath. But because it's only attached in the middle, you know, I can just bring that over. So there are the seven robins, all nicely attached to the wreath ring. I'm just going to let that glue cool for a little bit. And then I'm going to turn it over and start attaching the ribbons. Now I do realise that I didn't actually change the orientation of my uh, wreath ring. Um, but that's okay because I will use a little bit more hot glue perhaps to hold the ribbons in place. So I have my robin wreath. And I've gone ahead and attached one side. This is my top robin because there's seven you will have one that is your sort of your center robin. Uh, sorry, no, that one's my center robin. <laughs> and what you do with your ribbon, I've gone ahead and attached one. So there's my center one. And when you go to tie the ribbon, just make sure that you bring it up and take it back down. Don't just be tempted to sort of tie it across because you may end up with a twist in your ribbon. So use your finger as uh, a sort of um, hanging point or to represent a hanging point and make sure that your ribbon flows um, up to that point and back down. And as I mentioned before, I don't, uh, I didn't orientate normally what I would do. So the center one would be here and I would attach the ribbon around these two cross braces here. But I didn't. <laughs> so I'm I'm going to do it that I'm going to do it this way and um just tie it off on the other side of my glue. And basically you just want something that's going to stop this from traveling and I tied the first one on because I didn't want to um get stuck trying to tie a knot <laughs> so there we go that's it on both sides i'm going to grab my little pair of snippy scissors and just nip it off not too close to the knot it's going to be at the back so we won't see it and oh, voila there's our hanging robin so there's the round robin wreath project and I just want to take a moment 
in the round robin kit you have enough materials to make 10 robins so that's seven for the wreath and then three hanging robins and you could always you know do a completely different wreath and just have one robin in the middle of you know maybe a holly wreath or something like that so there's so many things that you can do with these but we've done something a little bit different as well so very quickly the round robin kit does your wreath and three hanging robins there are or there is a quick kit which just does three hanging robins and the template set is already in the quick kit the template set and the round robin uh, kit are separate or you can buy them together as a combo deal so that's those kits but what we've done this time round is we've done some extra things as well this is one of the robins on a little four inch hoop with some of our felted ivy leaves and then we've gone a little bit out of our norm and we've used the template to make some fabric robins as well so there's a fabric robin that's in the same colorway and you can see him he's sort of padded and the way that we did the fat I'm not going to sit on here and do a fabric tutorial or a stitching tutorial but we drew around the inside of the template that's your stitching line and then you stitch it up um, sorry you drew around the inside of the template and the outside of the template the inside of the template is your stitching line and the outside of the template is your cutting line and then obviously you can make them um, frayed in between so that's how we did that then we've also made some in felt and this one it's just straight felt with a blanket stitch there's no stitching uh, there's no filling or padding or anything like that and these have got buttons for eyes here's a slightly different colorway but again in fabric again we've got some really nice little Christmas fabrics going on there and then we decided to have yet another go with other things as well so these are some cards where the template has been used you can you can cut around the outside of the template you can cut around the inside of the template you can layer it up and these are a couple of you know simple cards but you can take it uh, you know a lot more diverse there's also a little robin applique on a bag so there are so many different things that and different mediums that you can use with these templates that allow you to create so many things the little felt robin that I've created uh, is going on a card so it will be a card but there'll be a felted robin on it so there's just a few ideas of the things that you can do and also taking the template and bringing it across into other mediums as well. So that is the Robin Wreath project and then you've got the Robin Quick Kit uh, and then you know the, the sky is the limit with where you can take that do please hit like on the video give it a little thumbs up please do subscribe to the channel if you're not already do hop over again to our facebook group that's www.facebook.com slash groups slash mums makery we've got a whole wonderful facebook group full of fluffy mates and uh, great people that's it from me for the Robin projects. I do thank you so much for spending your time with me and I wish you all a very crafty day. Mm -hmm.